Hello, my name is Carly Brown and I'm an author and poet based in Edinburgh. Today I'm going to be sharing with you three poems from my new poetry pamphlet, Anastasia, Look in the Mirror. And in honor of Valentine's Day, all three of these poems that I've picked are kind of love and relationship uh, themed. So the first poem that I'm going to share is dedicated to anybody who has ever had trouble expressing their romantic feelings for another person, and it's called uh, For Lack of a Better Word. People say that they made love like it's a cake. Take two or more people, stir to combine, wait for things to rise, and in time you will have made love. Congratulations. Or people say that they're not in love, like it's a geographical location. Right, so my car just broke down, but I'm not in love yet. The sign says I'm somewhere called infatuation. Look, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get a lift into love today, so I think I might just go back. And I see people that are together for years and they still haven't said it to each other. And I'm like, why are you waiting around for fat baby angels and tiny togas to like play violins and sprinkle rose petals while fireworks explode? Or I see people who say it after two or three days and I think, why? Don't you want to wait around to see if any kind of fat baby angels appear to like play violins and sprinkle rose petals? I don't know what love signifies in romantic contexts anymore, but I am terrified because according to popular lore, it is precious, like fancy jewelry. And I don't wear fancy jewelry because I'm scared I'm gonna lose it on the bus or have it stolen. That's why when I wanted to say it instead, I said, I love being with you. And you said, I know you love beans. And I said, no. No, not beans. I mean, I do love beans, but I love being with you. And I made a symbol with my fingers, like two U's and a V that was supposed to represent a cardiovascular cavity. Why didn't you understand what I was trying to tell you? And I wanted to say that I don't mean deus ex machina scenes in romantic comedies or greeting cards or shiny bands biting into our fingers. And I know that our reality will fall through the O and the E like water through a sieve. But that's language. And when I say it someday, I'll be pointing at you and me opening our eyes in the morning and what's rising molten and honey colored in them. And we could call it anything. But for now, I'm going to say love. Because if we don't really know what it means, and that means that we can make it mean whatever we want it to. I mean, right? It can change as we do, so I love you, for lack of a better word. So that poem was a very kind of starry-eyed, beginning of the relationship sort of poem. And the next poem that I'm going to share is a little bit more of an end of the relationship sort of poem. And this one is called Fisherman Knit. I give you a litany of reasons to stay. Your resilience, your fisherman knit jumper. You offered me the cuff once and pointed to the stitches, a pattern of receding waves. Wasn't I lucky to see the language of the grizzled early morning men etched in the light blue patterning of your well-made and long lasting yarn. Tonight, like a medieval poet, who never touched his beloved, I give a catalogue of traits, how you add too much milk to porridge, how you tuck in your shirts, how you wake up early to go down to the sea when the tide comes in as if somehow you caused it to happen. Sometimes I see your grandparents walk the beach, their bodies padded with wool, huddled under a black umbrella. I wish then that we could be like them, on that day, your jumper would be the right thing to wear. I argue by the lamplight. If the world asks us to age, wouldn't you want to keep it? So that when I wait for you in our white thatched house, I can see it, a smear of blue against the sandstone buildings, like a strip of paint we tried 
than decided against. So the final poem that I'm going to share is actually inspired by a work of art, inspired by a painting called Iona Croft by Francis Cadell from 1925, and the painting is called The House. But before that, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I hope that you've really enjoyed the performance. If you'd like to grab a copy of the book, Anastasia Look in the Mirror, you can order it from the publisher's website. Um, it's Stewed Rhubarb. That's the publisher. The website is stewedrhubarb.org, and you can find out lots more information about the book and about me on my website carlyjbrown.com. All right and here is the last poem. Thanks again so much for listening. It's called The House. Somehow the sun melted onto the roof, cracked open like an egg and all its juices ran down the sides of the white house on Iona, dripping and sliding in avalanches of color. All the roofs were blue but this one with its melody of falling reds, seeping browns and blurring tans. See me by the pink waterfall haystack, my legs pressed against the grass and wondering who decided to unstop the bottle and pour it onto that little white house. And if inside the colors fall on all the furniture, the roof leaking red and yellow, splattering the floorboards with strange brightness like eyes adjusting to light, making chairs sing orange and pink high notes. I fall asleep and dream of who lives there. Maybe their lives are fresh as new paint, cold and wet and slippery to touch in that little white house where nothing ever settles and nothing ever hardens.